Welcome back to Blake's Take, everybody, and wow, 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 what a wild championship Saturday in the college basketball world. It was insane. March Madness has officially just reached its complete and utter height of this today. It was just insane, and of course, we are going to be starting in the most anticipated game of the year for me in college basketball with the underdog Oregon State Beavers taking on the number 23 ranked nationally Colorado Buffaloes for the coveted Pac-12 championship trophy. The game was a hard-fought close battle and came down to the final shot to determine who would win the game. The Beavs got hot early from beyond the arc with six threes to two of which came from Gianna Hunt to take an early nine-point lead. But the Buffs battled back and kept things close with a powerful force in the paint, scoring 28 paint points in the first half while the Beavs only scored 14 to allow the Buffs to cut the deficit to five at the break. Yet in the second half, one of the conference's greatest players in McKinley Wright got to work, hitting shots and getting his teammates involved and his big men involved to get put the game within three with just over a minute to go, making the skis the beefs shaking their knees. Worth Altisi, though, then got the ball at the top of the key. Has he right? Losing Colorado defenders and driving to the basket for the clutch score. Now down to just 10 seconds remaining, where the Bees are still up 5, but until Wright gets the ball in his hands and fades away from deep over two Beaver defenders, hitting a devastating shot to put the Buffs within 2. And then after a series of back and forth free throws, the Buffs had one more chance with a half court heave at the buzzer, but it wouldn't go down, and your Oregon State Beavers are Pac-12 championships for the first time ever. Beavs win! Beavs win! Beavs win! Oh my goodness, the Bees are going dancing, everybody. They are going to the NCAA tournament. The Bees win their first Pac-12 title ever, their very first one, and are going dancing only for the second time in the past 30 years. I believed in this team from day one through their early season struggles in scoring, not being able to get starters involved in double-digit scoring, through their incredible win streaks down the stretch, knocking off teams like Oregon, their unfortunate close losses to teams like Arizona and Arizona State, and now their madness of the postseason championship run, taking down UCLA, Oregon, and now the Buffs to punch their ticket to the NCAA tournament. Oh my goodness, Oregon State Beavers, who would have thought, only me, what a run by the Bees this season. Going from a just 500 team, expected to finish last in the Pac-12, to now they are going to the NCAA tournament as Pac-12 champions. This is a team to be reckoned with. They have no ability to be feared by any other team they are just they have that dame dollar men's mindset just wanting to beat down anyone they can they are going to come into a battle just as equally as any other team and they're going to believe they have just as equal of a shot and that is exactly why the beavers won tonight just an incredible teamwork performance. They were conservative, making smart d defensive and offensive decisions, getting down the stretch, and they were trying to contain what a great in player in McKinley right down the stretch, and that is exactly what they did. Oh, this is such a great moment for Wayne Tinkle and Trace Tinkle, who is there tonight. Wayne said he won it for Trace, and all he did for the program, this shows just how Trace Tinkle brought attractive players to Oregon State, and now just the year after he left, the players came together and accomplished such an incredible goal. What a win by the Beavs, Pac-12 champions, and we will see them at NCAA Tournament. Now on to our next underdog of the night in Georgia Tech taking on the number 15 ranked nationally Florida State Seminoles. The Seminoles struggled big time offensively, turning the ball over 14 times in the first half. Yes, 14 times, which in return allowed the Yellow Jackets to score 19 points off of those turnovers alone. Yet despite those turnovers, the Seminoles were able to stay poised, hitting two key threes down the stretch to go into halftime only down one. While the Seminoles were hot from three, the Yellow Jackets couldn't buy one, going just 5 of 23 on the night with a whopping 21.7% from beyond the arc. 
Oh, that was just awful. It was tied for a majority of the second half until Michael D- Michael Davo hit uh, one of the Georgia Tech's very rare threes in this game to help break that tiebreaker. The Yellow Jacket momentum then skyrocketed with a Jordan Usher filthy baseline drive slam jam dunk. Rising above the rim, really making a statement that they weren't going down without a fight. The Yellow Jackets then held on to their lead and then sealed the deal with the Jose Alvarado steal that capped off a dominant defensive performance by Georgia Tech of 15 steals, the most ever in an ACC championship game. The Yellow Jackets win their first ACC championship in 28 years and are now going dancing for the first time in over a decade. What a win by the Yellow Jackets underdogs in this one as well you saw after the game how meaningful it was for the seniors and the coaching staff there at Georgia Tech just all they overcome this season and just the underdog mentality of be taking down anyone and they took down the Seminoles in this one what an improbable victory how competitive the ACC was and they come out on top so congratulations to the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets you are going dancing now on to the another shocking upset with the Big 12 favorite in uh, Baylor being taken down by Oklahoma State. Now Oklahoma State heads into the Big 12 championship to take on their close rival Texas. Number 12 versus number 13 ranked nationally. It was an all-around struggle for the Cowboys in the first half with the number one projected NBA prospect, Cade Cunningham, only scoring four points and having three fouls to put him in a deep foul trouble in a bad spot early, which didn't help the Cowboys' awful 0-for-9 shooting from the on the arc in the first half. Yikes. This allowed the Longhorns to play down the stretch, leads to 10 points at halftime, a 10-point lead at halftime after a series of alley-oops and dominant plays in the backcourt and frontcourt to really dominate in that final stretch of the first half. Cunningham finally hit the Cowboys' first three-pointer of the game in the opening minutes of, for the second half, and that got the ball rolling. And the star all-big 12 forward kept it rolling from there, adding another moments later where, in, in which Oklahoma State shortened an 11-point lead to just four However, foul trouble began to set in as Matthew Alexander, Montrefi, and Avery Anderson fouled out while Texas clinged on to its 81-75 lead with just over a minute 15 to go. Matt Coleman then closed this one out with two ice-cold free throws to tack on to his career-high 30 points, securing the Longhorns' first Big 12 victory in program history. Star freshman Cade Cunningham's 29-point performance wasn't enough in this one as the Cowboys fall in this one and now hope to obtain a larger, more meaningful trophy in the national championship. But what an incredible performance by Texas coming in as an underdog in the Big 12. They, this season, they have taken down seven top 25 ranked teams this season. They are upset underdogs, no doubt about it. They come to play, and they, just like Oregon State and just like Georgia Tech, they come to play. They don't care what the odds are. They're going to beat you because they that's they just have that Mamba mentality mindset. So just an incredible win by Texas. Hopefully they can make a deep run, and I'm gonna, I really think Oklahoma State, despite this loss, is still going to have an incredible NCAA run. But I hope they don't have too good a run past the team of 32 in which they would uh, sneak peek and try and beat the Beavs potentially if they were in the Midwestern bracket. But we'll see how that bracket plays out. Hopefully the Beavs can dodge them because that is a big bullet to overtake. And now last to the ones who are expected to finish least in underdog Georgetown and Patrick Ewing looking to cap off their improbable Big East run of the century. After wins over Marquette, Villanova, and Seton Hall, the Hoyas hope to just get one more win against number 17 ranked nationally, Creighton. It was a close game until near the end of the first half, where the Hoyas closed the first half on a 23-2 run, dominating both offensively and defensively, putting them back up 18 at the break. 
What a run there. Georgia Tech just dominated that then. And they kept dominating, piling on to their total, starting the second half with a 16-3 spurt to take the 52-21 lead and putting, making it so that Creighton could not recover from it. Capping off their improb improbable Big East title run after they were originally picked to finish last in the conference. Ewing t is taking his team back to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2015. On the 49th anniversary of the day, Georgetown hired John Thompson, the late Hall of Fame coach who transformed the program into a national powerhouse and one of the most iconic brands in college basketball, coaching Ewing himself. The Hoyas won their record 8th Big East tournament title and their first since 2007. Just a great win there. Always so just a great incredible weekend all around for the underdog and college basketball all around. Underdogs rose up and knew what they had to do. They were determined on getting their goal of making it to the dance, making it to the NCAA tournament, and being the best in their conference and having that title for the rest of this year. Just great all-around basketball action. It was pretty insane and pretty crazy. But you can't deny that this isn't just the least of craziness. Because next weekend is where the madness reach its height at the NCAA tournament. It's going to be wild. We're going to see underdog upsets and dominating victories by heavy, heavily favorites. And it's all going to come down from a pool of 68 down to just one champion. It's going to be awesome, folks. Make sure to tune into that next weekend. Hope you all enjoyed this one. Congratulations again to the Oregon State Beavers, Pac-12 champions. We're going crazy here in, in Corvallis. We're going nuts. So congratulations to Coach Tinkle and his Oregon State players. Players. They put on a great show. Hope you all enjoyed this episode, catching me and uh, doing all these local and national sports. This was a great one. This one I really enjoyed. This one made me really happy and excited for the future to come of this Oregon State basketball program. And I'm going to catch you all in the next one. Have a good rest of your night.